there are a few different ways to set up and solve clock problems, so this is just one method that you could work through. The easiest way is just to memorize some values for the rates of the different hands involved. So you're going to have the second hand, the minute hand, and the hour hand that could be involved. And you could mathematically figure these out every time. When you go to draw your clocks, I have found the easiest approach is to kind of what I think of as the corners, get those first. So you have 12, 6, 3, and 9, and then it's easy to just go in and fill in the ones that are missing, and it should be relatively correctly shaped, everything kind of in the right places. So if you think about the second hand, we're going to put all of these rates in terms of degrees per minute. So the second hand, if you think about the second hand, it's going to go all the way around your clock in one minute. So its rate is 360 degrees per minute. If you think about the distance from one hour to the next, there are 12 of those in the whole circle. So if you take 360, divide it by the 12 segments, then you're going to end up with 30 degrees for every one of those segments. So if you're talking about a minute, Okay, in one minute, the minute hand is going to move one of those little sections. There's five minutes between each one of those, so that means it's going to go a total of six degrees in that minute. You could also take your 360 degrees in the whole thing, divide it by 60 minutes, and that also gets you your six degrees. The last one for the hour, it's going to take it a full 60 minutes to go from one hour mark to the next. So in one minute, okay, one sixtieth of 30 degrees, that will give you 0. 0.5 degrees per minute. And again, instead of sitting and figuring that out each time, it's best just to memorize those values. The ones you're going to see most often are going to be minutes and hours, but it's good to know the seconds as well. And since all the hands are moving together at the same time, they're both moving in the same direction, you're going to be subtracting your rates in order to get your relative rate. So if you have your minute and hour hand moving together, you would just do 6 minus 0. 0.5 and you get their relative rate then is 5.5 .5 degrees per minute. So we'll set up some problems and we'll see how we can apply that. So how long after 5 o'clock do the hour and minute hands of a watch align? So we'll draw, draw our clock here, get your 12, 6, 3, and 9. And if you're on a page where there's already a circle drawn, you can always use the circle that's already there if you've solved it. So at 5 o'clock, I always draw the minute hand in first, and I draw it all the way out to the edge. So if it's exactly on the hour, it's going to be all the way on that 12. And then at 5 o'clock, the hour hand is going to be exactly on the 5. It has not gone past it at all yet. And then you need to think about which hand is going to move to reach the other one. Is the hour hand going to hit the minute hand first or the other way around? And in this one, your minute hand is going to be traveling to meet the hour hand. And you need to know how many degrees it's going to travel. So I count up how many whole sections there are. And then if there's any little extra bits, then we can deal with those. But when it's exactly on an hour, you're only going to have whole sections. And I kind of draw in between each hour as I count them. So we've got one, two, three, four five whole sections. Each section we said was 30 degrees, and if you divide your degrees by the rate in degrees per minute, that'll tell us how many minutes it takes for them to meet. So since this is the hour and minute hand, you have your 0.5 degrees per minute and your 6 degrees per minute. You subtract those, and you have your 5.5 .5 degrees per minute. So when you do 150 divided by 5.5, .5, you end up with 27.3 minutes. Okay. And this next one, we're at 6.05. So we'll take our time to draw our clock. The more times you sit and draw these, the faster it'll come when you're actually taking the test. So at 6.05, the minute hand is exactly on the 1. And if it's 6.05, it's not exactly on the 6 for the hour hand. It's going to be just a little bit past. And I will go ahead and draw it a little bit further just so I can see it well. And I know it's not on the 6. So the minute hand is going to be moving to catch up with the hour hand. How many whole sections do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 whole sections again. But this time there's a little bit that we need to add on to it. 
it has gone five minutes out of the 60 minutes it takes to go from hour to hour. So it's going to be five sixtieths of the way. If it had been 610, it would have been 10 sixtieths. 612, 12 sixtieths. Okay. We'll multiply that times the 30 degrees per segment. And then we divide by the rate of our hands. Again, it's the minute in the hour hand. So that's going to be 5.5 when you subtract those. And I kind of goofed a little bit because there's a word there I didn't pay attention to and I should have. We want to know when it lines up for the third time. So we don't have to change anything that we've done so far. That's how many degrees on top that it'll take to reach it the first time. Then it has to go around again a whole 360 degrees to get it the second time and then another 360 degrees to reach it the third time. So you're just going to add on those extra two circles and whenever you divide here, since we're dividing degrees by degrees per minute, that's going to give us minutes. But our answer once it in hours, so at the end you'll just divide it by 60 and we should get 2.64. Now we're at 412. Okay, go to the minute. So the 12 is going to be in between whoop, the 2 and the 3. That's at 12. And 4 o'clock, it's going to be between the four and the five there. It has gone 12 out of the 60 minutes there. And we want to take how long for the minute and hour hand. The minute's going to move to catch up with the hour hand. So count how many whole segments. There's only the one whole segment. Okay. We've got an extra bit at the beginning and an extra bit at the end this time. So this section here, it's gone two out of the five minutes that it takes to go from the two to the three. So that means that there's three minutes left out of the five to travel there. Okay. And then on this end, this little bit, it's gone 12 out of the 60 minutes. We'll multiply that times the 30 degrees per segment. It's minute and hour hand, so that's 5.5 degrees per minute. And when you do the math, we should get 9.82. And it should make sense when you look at that. I mean, that makes sense with the numbers that you have there. Okay. Now, this one wants us to add or find out when they're going to be 50 degrees apart. So, 730. And you might come up with a faster way of, of doing this. You might be able to visualize it in your head and figure out the angles without drawing everything. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. I have to draw them. Okay. So they're already less than 50 degrees apart. So that means that the minute hand is going to have to travel here, meet the hour hand, and then keep going until it's 50 degrees past it. So we have to find that angle, then just add 50 to it, and then work it like we've been doing the others. So how many whole segments are there? It's exactly on that six. So there's one whole segment. And then there's a little bit here at the end. It's 30 out of the 60 minutes. You could just do 1.5 when you type it in your calculator. And then it needs to go 50 more degrees. Then we divide by our related rate of the two hands. And we end up with 17.3 minutes. You have several more problems set up like this. There's an answer key there at the end. So you should be able to work them. This is not the only method. If you find a faster way, great. But I hope this helped some.